Hey guys, it's Savannah and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another Thrift Flip Thursday video, but I have put all of my favorite thrift flips that I have done so far into one video so that you guys can binge watch them, maybe get some ideas for yourself. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First flip, I found this box at the thrift store. It was for $6.98 and I automatically knew what I wanted. So I just started by spray painting it. It was just a lot easier for me to spray paint this box and I removed the handle and I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum's heirloom, heirloom white. It was in satin. I wish I had matte, but satin did work, but I just, that's just what I prefer. I prefer matte. Um, I guess I just wasn't paying attention. Shocker. Um, and then once it was dry, I'm taking my sander. I tried my finger sander, but I felt like I got more coverage with the Dollar Tree sander. And I'm just sanding all over this box, kind of making it look a little like beat up. Now, I will say sometimes watching thrift flips, it's kind of hard because it's like, oh, you know, that's just one item. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that. And I'm putting you guys through an earthquake. But this, my thrift store actually had two of these boxes. So I definitely think that these are easy to find. Then next, I'm taking my chippy brush and some antique Waverly wax. And I am just distressing all over this box. There's no rhyme or reason just going until I get as much as I like. Next, I'm taking these Dollar Tree letters, and you guys, I really, really tried to be organized, okay? I was like, I'm going to do this right. I'm going to try to measure, you know, get everything straight. Yeah, this is this is why I don't, I don't do those kind of things. <laughs> so I took a jumbo popsicle stick, and I started by just laying all the letters, like, out on the top as straight as I could get them, and then I was going to transfer them to the box like so. Well, I just ended up not liking how they looked, so I had to end up going back and just straightening them up. You can use your Cricut, but I mean, I have a Cricut. I just thought it's just sometimes easier. It's just easier using like Dollar Tree letters or stuff like that versus like going in and typing things out. So, and these are just as cute as printing something off your Cricut. Then once I got it how I liked it, I like to sand over my letters or even if I'm using vinyl just to distress them a little bit more. Then I'm taking this handle that I got from Walmart. I think it was like five bucks and it came with two. It may have been cheaper than that. I'm not really sure. But I just like this a lot better than the wood handle that was on there to begin with. But where the holes were from the old one, it was too um, wide for this one. So I ended up just hot gluing it with some Gorilla hot glue and putting that handle on the front. And I am so excited how this turned out, you guys. I've always wanted one of these and I'm so happy I got to make it and I made it for all under 10 bucks. Like I said, today is a Thrift Flip Thursday video. Shayna from Robinson Repurposing and I host this challenge every second Thursday of every month. So anyone with a channel can join. And in my description box, there is going to be a link to the playlist and all the other amazing creators who decided to join in on this challenge this month. Also, over on Instagram, we host a Thrift Flip decor tour every single Thursday. And anyone is you know, able to join. It is also hosted by us and Camaro from Dying to DIY. So if that's something you're interested in, shoot one of us a message over on Instagram and we will get you added to a group. Don't forget to check out the playlist when you're done with this video and let's get back into the flips. For our next thrift flip, I found this little bowl table thing <laughs> and it was two bucks and I thought it would be really cute so I take these Dollar Tree pop-up stickers now Nicole from the Weeks Nest 
I believe that she was the first person that ever started using these pop-up stickers as like details on stuff. So she definitely deserves all the credit for this, but I am finally getting around to try it. I see a lot of people do it now, but I'm just taking these and I'm going around the outside of this little stand. Then I'm taking my ivory Waverly chalk paint surprise and I am going to coat this thing now I don't mind if some of this black shows through actually in the end you'll see but I do just give it one coat I didn't worry about the middle because I kind of liked it like the dark anyways and then something's going to set in the middle of it so that didn't bother me again if you find something like this and it bothers you you're more than welcome to paint it then I'm going in with my Antique Waverly Wax and my chip brush, and I am just going to distress this. Now, I'm going in over the pop-up stickers a lot more than, you know, like flat surfaces and going on like the base of this where it's raised on the edges, the corners. Just go as crazy as you want. <laughs> And then last but not least, because I did like some of that black showing through, I'm going back in and I'm kind of just like um, scratching off the paint. So sanding off some of that paint. So some of that black kind of shows through and it looks more worn and old. And I definitely think it gives it, I don't know, it looks so cute. And when I saw this, I pictured a candle in the middle with greenery around it, but See, I do a close up here. I think it's so cute. So let me know what you guys think. If you are new to my channel, I'm Savannah and I love doing Dollar Tree DIYs or thrift flips, honestly anything that can save me a buck when it comes to decorating my house. So if that's something you're into, I hope that you stick around, hit that subscribe button. Also follow me over on Instagram at Savvy Crafts with Savannah. That's where I feel like I can be a little bit more personal with you guys. Also, if you want to support my channel, there is a link in my description box. It means so much to me, but another way to support my channel is liking, sharing, commenting on all of my videos. It really does help my channel out so much, and it means the absolute world to me. You guys have no idea. All right, let's get back into the video. Now, this next little DIY, I wouldn't even call it a DIY, but this part is relevant to our next DIY. I picked this up off the side of the road <laughs> and it is like a door that I think was on like a china cabinet because it had glass in it. And I just, I don't know, I thought this would be really cute uh, out in your garden or on your front porch. And you'll see why in a minute, you know, this is relevant to our next DIY. But literally all I did, I took the glass out, wiped it down with a baby wipe, and I am painting this whole thing in the drop cloth by Dixie Bell. And just one coat was good because I didn't mind some of that wood showing through. You could do whatever color you want. You could do color. Color would be pretty in your garden. So, um, yeah, I think this turned out really cute, with the, especially with the next DIY. Like I said, super simple. It's literally just painting this, this door. I almost bit my tongue. And I am not going to show you the reveal yet because we are going to do our last DIY before I show you the reveal of this project. All right, and for our last DIY, you're gonna need one of these willow wreaths from the Dollar Tree. And I just started by taking this pick that I got from Walmart. It was 97 cents. I loved the greenery and a little bit of the pink. I think it's perfect for summer or spring. Um, and I'm taking some dog toenail clippers from the Dollar Tree and I am just trimming all of the little pieces off. So they are all individual pieces. And then I'm going to just lay them on the top, almost in like a swag formation and, you know, just play around with it until I get them how I like it. And then I'm going to take a Dollar Tree zip tie and I'm going to zip tie these in place. Now you could always like stick them in there or hot glue them, 
but I, you know, maybe want to change these out of in one day, you know, who knows? It was only a dollar, so stop being so cheap, girl. But, you know, I just keep adding branches in there and then zip tying them to make sure they stay. And don't worry about what color you use because we're going to cover that red anyway, so don't worry about that. But I did add two extra zip ties to the middle just to make sure that these branches or these florals, greenery, whatever you want to call them, did not go anywhere. Now, before we start on our bow, I am just taking some more 97 cent greenery from the Walmart, <laughs> I almost said the Dollar Tree, and I am just adding that to the end just to give a little bit more dimension and different patterns and florals in this little wreath and you can see i already have one of my bows laid out there so i did go ahead and add raffia and cinch that bow once i got the greenery how i wanted but i just felt like the bow was too small for this wreath so i did want to add something else in there like some tails and but i love the messy bow i you know i think clean bows are cute too but I just love a messy bow, probably because I'm so messy. My life is a mess. So I'm taking some more of that like burlap ribbon and some lace ribbon, and I'm gonna lay the bow in the middle of it, and then I'm gonna take a zip tie and zip tie these together. And then it'll cinch it, and it'll look like this bow has tails or longer pieces. And I did feel like that added what I wanted. And then I um, dovetailed the ends. And then I also took some jute and wrapped it around the middle to cover that red zip tie. And then I took the excess pieces and I tied that in the middle of the wreath to you know secure it. And I can always take it off if I wanted to. And that is it and i made this wreath actually for my door but after making that window i th i was like oh this is it this is where it's going so let me know what you guys think what is your favorite from today and which are there any diys you're going to be doing <laughs> trash to treasure DIY I got this candle holder from the thrift store for five dollars and I think it was on sale more than that and I just thought it was so pretty and at first I didn't like the flowers in it but I wanted to spray paint this white so I spray painted it in rust-oleum's heirloom white and then I take this upstairs now, again, at first, I really didn't like the florals in the middle. Maybe it's because it was just too much. But once I got at home and I started looking at them, I don't know. I just felt like they looked like old, not dead flowers, but they just look so pretty to me. So I do end up using them, but I don't use all of them. So once I get this upstairs and it's dry, I am taking my chip brush 
and some antique Waverly wax. And I'm just stressing all of these little spindles. Now these came out because in the bottom there was screws. So I just unscrewed these and it made it super easy to, you know, like distress and do what I needed to do with this. So I'm just going over these going on the whole thing, but mostly where the top is, where there's crevices or where something you know comes out more just to give that more dimension and make those things really pop. So again, I'm just going on this other spindle, just dry brushing it until I get enough on there as I, I want. Now I am gonna sand these down, but I wanted to distress first. So then I am taking the base and I am distressing this as well. And you'll see in a second, I get a little crazy. I put a lot, on, there you go. I put a lot on there, <laughs> but no worries. You can always go back and fix stuff if you're distressing. And that's the fun thing about paint and sometimes not even paint, just a sander in general. So I'm just distressing this going on the corners, the sides, the middle, and I all want this to, you know, look cohesive, but almost like it's old. <laughs> Now I'm just taking my little finger sander and a lot of people ask me where I get this. I get these from Walmart back in the paint section where you sand, where you sand, where the sanders are, but you can also order these on Amazon. Just type in mini yellow gator sander. So I'm just going through and I'm sanding all of these spindles down. I want it to almost look old and like the paint has chipped off a little bit. And once I started doing this, I was like, oh my gosh. I love this. This DIY is my favorite from today or like trash to treasure. I'm obsessed with it. So then I just sand on the base and you can see like where I did get a little crazy. It does, ugh, it does all just end up blending out and looks really good towards the end. And you just want to make sure that you get when you're sanding, get on the sides. So that wood just starts pulling through and I try to show you, but it, it looks so good in person. You guys, I I love this. So again, I'm just standing on the sides. I know I just said that, <laughs> but now I'm going to put this back together, but to put the screws in, I'm going to go downstairs because my baby was sleeping in the same room. So I'm just going to set these in and kind of show you how I style it. And then I just take, I think these things came with like five of these little things. There was five of those in there, but I just take one and I set that in the middle and I think that's just perfect. And I love how this came out. So let me know what you think. second favorite. I love how this came out, but you guys, the footage of what this looked like before I was not recording. And let me just tell you, it, it was horrible. It looked like it, it came out of your grandma's house. It had like 1776. My husband tried to give me a history quiz on what happened that year. So I'm going to give you guys one, what happened that year. And so anyways, it was, it was not cute. So I took this upstairs and I am giving this a good coat of my ivory Waverly chalk paint. Then I'm taking a small brush and some antique Waverly wax. And the best way I know to describe this is I'm basically just tracing the outline of this, you know, church or house, or obviously it's a church. I think it'd be a church, but I'm literally just taking a small paintbrush and some antique Waverly wax. And I am just going all around the outside of this church. Now I want it to kind of frame this out. Okay. And you guys are going to look at this and be like, girl, what are you doing? But you have to trust the process. This comes out so cute. Just the simplicity of it. I, I love it. So anyways, yeah, just take a small brush and I'm kind of just tracing around. Uh, once I get to the sides, I go a little darker in some areas. Um, also I wanted to tell you guys, I know in my last like thrift flip video, this is a trash to treasure, but you know, people's trash gets taken to the thrift store. So I feel like that's a thrift flip too. Anyways, you guys were asking about bread boxes. I know a lot of you guys have been looking. Now, I'm not sure if that box was actually a bread box, but I made it one. So you, you don't necessarily have to look for an actual bread box, but if you find a box that is cute and you think you can turn it into a bread box, I saw another one at the thrift store today. So I've seen three in under a week, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna show you guys this oopsie. It's not oopsie, it was like, oh girl, no. So, I was like, oh, let's add some doors. So here I am adding some doors and I'm like, oh, it's going good, it's going good, it's looking cute. And I end up hating it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what? No. So I have to go back and sand over it and then repaint, but 
it, it all works out in the end. Then while my mistake was drying, I'm taking some black acrylic apple barrel paint and I am just going over where I just outlined with the, um, the wax, the Waverly antique wax. Now I, I never really use black when I distress or, you know, do things, but I just felt like this gave it a lot more dimension, it brought some more colors in there. And I really just liked the way it looked with the black. And I know you guys are sitting here thinking like, girl, this, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but I promise it turns out so cute. So again, I'm just going over this, no rhyme or reason, going darker in some spots and kind of just dragging that brush in others. Then I'm taking my little chippy brush and I am going to distress the center of this. Now I want to do this before I do the next step because again, I feel like it all makes it blend in and looks you know, looks well. And again, you can always see, I always go heavy handed with my distressing. And then I always end up going back either in with the first base coat or sanding it down. And because this was wood, I sanded it down. And you can see once you start sanding it, it all starts to like blend in. And then those outlines kind of blend in just a little bit, but they're still there. So I feel like this is starting to look really, really cute. Then I'm doing the sides as well with a bigger sander. This is a sander from the Dollar Tree, just to make some of that wood pop out on the sides. And then I'm taking some of this Dollar Tree Berry Garland and I am gonna make a wreath. So I'm just taking it and twisting it up until I get it as much as I like and a cute, like, you know, a good enough circle. And then I just kind of twist that off. And obviously we're gonna hot glue this down. Now I wanted this kind of towards the top. So it looked, I don't know, you know, like a wreath at the top of like a window, even though there is no window there. But I don't know, I just, I, maybe I'm just simple and I love like simple farmhouse chic. I just love the simplicity of this. So then I wanted to distress a little bit with some of that black just to kind of pull all the colors through. So I'm just taking my chip brush and some of that black and I'm just dry brushing over the top of this as well, just to, you know, bring all the colors in together. Once I got it how I liked it, I then am gonna take my sander and go back over and blend all of that in. And then I wanted to add a little bow to the top, so I just took one strand of raffia, tied it in a bow, and then I always like to split my raffia. If you're new here, it's a way to make you know, your raffia go a long way. So just take one strand. It's easier to work with when it's just one. Tie it, don't pull tight because you'll snap it. And then go back and just split your strands, you know, the little tails of your bow and then the little loops of your bow. And then I am going to hot glue this to the top of this wreath. And you guys, again, this is my second, I don't know, the first and this one are my favorites. I love this. I think it's so cute. So let me know what you guys think. Moving on to our next trash to treasure. I found this at the thrift store. It is actually from Ikea and I just love the bones of it. It did have glass in there, like, you know, right there, <laughs> but it was super easy to take out. They were almost like picture frames. And then I took this outside and I spray painted it with the heirloom chalk paint, not chalk paint, uh, by Rust-Oleum paint as well. Then once that was dry, I took this upstairs to my craft room and I'm taking my chip brush and some antique Waverly wax and I'm kind of just dabbing it on this. I want it to look, you know, rusted like it's an old lantern and I did it. I did want to leave the glass out of this. So this is a super simple DIY, you know, or, or flip or trash to treasure. It's you can find something and just give it a good coat of paint and make it look amazing. So again, I'm just taking the antique Waverly wax and I'm going, you know, on the design, on the raised spaces, on that little handle thing that you open it with just to give it, you know, like more dimension and make it look more rustic, farmhouse, chic, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And then honestly, that is it, you guys. I styled it with some greenery in there and a candle. And I think this is so cute. It will definitely be a part of my decor. And I only spent like two bucks on it.
Now, moving on to our last trash to treasure DIY, I found these little candle holders and I thought these were so cute. I felt like they had good bones. I felt like there was potential with them. So I thought they were super cute. So I wanted to spray paint these black. So I used Rust-Oleum flat black and then I take these upstairs. Now, not gonna lie you guys, after I spray painted these, I kind of wish I would have done them in white but I feel like I do everything white. So we're gonna go with a different color. So once I get them upstairs, I'm gonna start sanding them down, kind of like we did the candle holders. I want it to look almost like the paint has chipped on these and they are old. Again, I don't know if I said this already, I can't remember, but this is another super simple DIY. All this really needed was just some good paint because they already looked amazing the way that they were. And if you liked them the way that they were, totally cute too, you know? Um, but anyways, I'm just going through sanding, getting that wood to come through and yeah. Then I'm taking my chippy brush and some ivory white Waverly chalk. I don't know why I always do that. I always say ivory white. It's just ivory. So ivory Waverly chalk paint and I am just going through and dry brushing on these two. I just wanted to give it, I don't know, a little more dimension, add a little bit of contrast in there so i just dry brush all over both of them everywhere obviously <laughs> i don't know why i always say that but you know just dry brush over it. everyone has i feel like their own technique to distressing and if you're new here and you don't know how to distress and you have questions you guys always comment down below ask i got you i will try to explain the best way i can i try to explain them in my videos but you know sometimes it's just easier to watch things Then once I got as much distressing on there as I wanted, I did go back in and sand over it just to blend all of that in. Um, and this did get a little messy. So once I was done, I, you know, wiped it down with a Clorox wipe. I'm not sure that that's relevant, <laughs> but I did do that. And I think these turned out again, it's super simple, but I think they're so cute. And I don't have tapered candles to put in here because my son broke all of them. So <laughs> here's what they look like hanging up on my wall. All right, so for our first flip, I found this little wood toolbox and I thought it was so cute. I just, I loved the bones of it um, and I really wanted to turn it into something cute. Like when I saw it, I thought of a centerpiece or, you know, just it could honestly sit anywhere. So I started by sanding it down. Now you guys are gonna have to bear with me on the angle of this um, video because I am not at home. I don't know if you guys saw my um my community tab post but my husband is going through some things right now we still don't have any answers so when we do i'll update you guys so you're gonna have to bear with me on this video Okay, then I am taking this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in Serenity Blue. I thought this was so pretty, and I thought it would be a lot easier than trying to paint down inside of this toolbox. So I took this outside and spray painted it, and look how pretty this is. I love this color. So then I'm gonna go in with my Antique Waverly Wax and a chip brush, and I'm gonna start distressing it. So a little bit more of a story, so my husband was having some back issues and he went to a back surgeon to try to figure out what was going on. So they did like a lot of scans, like CT scans, and then they referred him to an oncologist. So long story short, he has swollen lymph nodes. We're not really sure what's causing it other than the obvious reason. So we are still waiting. He has a, a PET scan next week and then hopefully we'll have more answers. So if you guys could just think about him um, and, you know, we're going to be okay. We're going to get through it though. We're strong. So anyways, I'm just going through this. That's kind of what's going on. I'm up at my in-laws um, just because my daughter's on spring break. So we're just spending a little bit of time up here. I'm actually in the guest house, like the mother-in-law suite. So that's why the angle is totally weird. <laughs> and I'm not at my craft table. 
So anyways, I'm just going in and I'm distressing this, going on the edges, the sides. I do everywhere. I don't go down into it, like into the bottom, because I really wasn't worried about that. But I did kind of go on the inside where the, you know, like almost to the bottom, if that makes sense. Um, just the parts that would show I distressed. So then once I had it as much as I, you know, I felt like I wanted, um, I, you guys, I'm obsessed with this. This is my favorite flip from today. I, when I get this home, I'll probably use it as a centerpiece or just sitting on like a, like my bench. As soon as you walk into my house with some cute decorations in it, I love this. So let me know what you guys think. Next, I found this ladder, and I think this is so cute. I feel like there's so much you could do with this. When I saw it, I thought of like a, in your guest bathroom holding towels. I think that would be so cute. So I'm going to paint this in the Waverly color moss. But first, I'm going to go in and kind of sand this down. And then I'm going to start painting it. And the more I painted it, the more I became obsessed with this color. Usually I only use like the celery color. But oh my gosh, I love this dark, almost like an olive green. So I paint this whole ladder front and back. So I just wanted to say, like I said in the beginning, I feel like thrift flips are so underappreciated because yes, you can make something like this at a Dollar Tree items, but you would end up spending more buying those items than you would actually going to the thrift store and finding it. So I love flipping items. I definitely think that more people should, you know, look at other places other than just Dollar Tree. And this is why I love these videos. And then this is where it starts just really coming together and I really started to love that color. Now, I didn't go for like full coverage. I didn't mind if some of that wood still showed through just a little bit. But once this was dry, I'm going in with my Antique Waverly Wax and a chip brush and I'm just lightly distressing the edges of these things because it already looks so distressed because the wood's kind of popping through. But I wanted to just add a little bit more. So I'm just going in on the edges and just stressing it. And then I felt like it looked a little bit too dark. So I wanted to add, you know, like some highlights in with it. So I'm going to go in with some white Waverly chalk paint. And I am going to just kind of just dry brush over it. You'll see in a second I get a little heavy right here. Yep. Yep, too much, girl. Too, too much. So I just take my sander and I just sand that down and it, you know, it looks fine. You, I mean, you can barely tell. That's what's awesome about a sander. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to add like a little bit of highlight in this because it was so dark. I just wanted, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I just wanted to do it. So I think this turned out so cute. When I get home, I'll probably put this in my guest bathroom. Again, with some like towels hanging over it. I think that would be absolutely adorable. So you guys let me know what you think. I think this was a great find. I'm obsessed with this little ladder. Then I found this cute little rooster candle holder. I don't know. I feel like you could do a lot with it. And I asked Addie what color I should paint it. And she said the white. So we're going to go with the white. I know you guys don't like, some people don't like what I use, just white. So I did try to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and use different colors in this video. So if you're mad that I use white, blame Addie. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So then I just took some antique, not antique, Waverly white chalk paint. And I just dry brushed over this whole rooster on the inside as well. Now this can fit like a big candle. I think this is so cute. You could also put like a vase in it. So I'm going to show you two different ways to style it. But I felt like this is a really cute find as well. So I'm just going in and I am just painting this whole thing in the middle, on the bottom, everywhere.
Then you guessed it, we're gonna go in and distress this rooster. So I'm just taking the antique Waverly wax and a chip brush and I am just dry brushing on the edges over its whole body. I do focus a lot more like on the holes of the rooster because I want those to look a little bit more, you know, like rusted. Um, so I do go a little bit heavier there and just a little bit heavier on the edges and over like the eye, just everywhere. You guys, I mean, I think everyone has their own technique of dry brushing. So, I mean, see how I'm kind of circling over the, um, holes. I just wanted those to be like very prominent. Like they were very old and I did also distress on the inside as well. And then I decided to go back in over with my sander just to pull some of that black through, sand off some of that distressing and make this rooster look a little bit more, you know, like it's, it's been through it. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, I found this cute little stair basket. And oh my gosh, I I have seen these like a long time ago. I feel like people used to always have these on their stairs. And I don't know, I just felt like I could make it look cute. So I am taking some white Waverly chalk paint and I am just dry brushing all over this. Now I don't go on the inside because I really wasn't worried about the inside. But I did go all over it on the bottom, on the handles, and kind of on the top. Now, again, totally sorry about the angle. This is just what we're working with. <laughs> um, but I did want to get this video out for you guys. I know I've been super quiet over the past week. We've just, like I said, we're going through it. But um, I think this is so cute. I feel like you could put like blankets in it or throw some greenery in it. So definitely going to style it. I'm not sure yet. So again, I'm just going over this with my white Waverly chalk paint. And you can see a little bit where it is kind of broken. But that didn't bother me. I think it'll be completely fine. So yeah. Then I just went back in with my antique Waverly wax and I kind of just wanted to dry brush over it, even though it kind of already looked distressed because I didn't go super heavy with, you know, the paint. I wanted some of that basket to show through, but I still wanted to add a little bit more dimension. Like the basket was old, but I, I focused more on like the handles and around the basket. I made that more you know, distressed and detailed because I feel like that was more, I don't know, noticeable, not being distressed. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I think this basket is so cute. I'm excited to get it home and put it on my stairs and just play around with some fun things. So for now, I'm going to have to style it here, but you guys let me know what you think. First DIY, isn't it so pretty? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so I have this by our laundry room door in our kitchen. This has been like my favorite piece to just stick mail into, obviously, and um, it broke. So I am definitely gonna keep it and use like the scraps for stuff. I already have an idea, but I definitely wanted to replace this and I had this piece in my stash. I've had it in my stash for a long, long time. It's big, it's cute, and I feel like it would really look good there, but obviously it needs a makeover. So this is gonna be our first flip and we're gonna start by removing all the hardware pieces on this, um, I don't know, mail holder. I don't know, it would even be cute as a flower pot too. I loved the size of them and then I love the little metal, you know, accents on it as well. I think those are really cute and I definitely think those are really in right now. So I'm just removing all of those and then setting those to the side. Then I'm just taking my Dollar Tree sander and I'm just going in and sanding the face of it, the sides, the corners. Um, I don't worry about the inside because honestly I don't even paint there. I feel like that's a waste of paint. And so I just sanded that down really good and then I'm taking drop cloth by Dixie Bell, and I'm going to paint this whole piece, obviously. No, we're going to leave one piece not painted. 
just kidding. Anyways, so we are going to paint this whole piece. Again, I don't worry about the inside because for one, you would literally have to get a stool and stand on it to see inside of it. And for two, if you come in my house and do that, you need to leave. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, I just feel like that's a waste of paint and it's never going to be seen. I do do like the top, like the lip of it just to kind of pull it all together. And then, yeah, so I'm just going all over this piece, painting it and getting it how I like. And I know some people are like really, I don't, I don't know if anal is the word, but you know, they like a finished product. And if that's, if that's you, then by all means paint the inside. But, um, you know, I feel like this looks store bought without having to, waste paint it on the inside you know what I mean if it was going to be seen you guys know like if it's going to be seen I'll paint it you know what I mean but this is not going to be seen so I don't I just that's personally me if that bothers you of course paint the inside so again I'm just going on the sides I do want to say thank you to everyone that um you know checked on my grandpa and had really kind words he is doing better so let's just Fingers crossed. He is my world. I love him. And I just, life would not be the same without him. So I just appreciate you guys being super patient in these past, this past week. I have missed my craft room and I'm super excited to be back. So once everything is painted, we are then going to go in with our antique Waverly wax and our chip brush, and we're going to start feathering out the edges. Now I have the color ink as well, because once I did the antique, I kind of took a little bit of the ink and put that in it as well, just to, I don't know, add a little bit more dimension. And so I'm just going on the edges, just feathering it out. And then once I got some in the middle and on the sides, I will go back in and sand it to tone it down and make it look like it was made this way. Now I'm just going to repeat that same step for the other three and I do do the bottom. I feel like every time I say I'm like, how childish of me. I do do. I do the bottom <laughs> of the other ones, like the bottom, you can see it right there. I do that as well, but I'm just going in, feathering it out, taking my sander, sanding it down, getting it how I like it. And I do everywhere that I painted white, I distress. So even on the sides, the little bitty side. These are so easy to find right now too, these little mail organizer things. I feel like they are everywhere. So once I got it highlighted again, I'm going back in and sanding it down. And then we are going to reattach all the hardware. And I think this is a really cute piece. You could put floral in there. You could put, you could even put it outside in like a garden with actual plants. I would just drill like some holes in the bottom. This is really cute. Of course, I'm going to use it to stick all my junk in, but it is a really cute piece. So let me know what you guys think. Next flip, I'm taking this glass pitcher. I've had this in my stash for a while and I did want to make like a cute vase out of it. So that's what we're going to do. I am taking this color by Waverly. It's ocean. I believe I used this in my red, white, and blue video and the color of this, I just loved. I love blues. I think it's so pretty. So that's the color that I decided to paint the pitcher with. So I'm just going in with a paintbrush, obviously. <laughs> And I'm just painting this whole picture. I'm taking my heat gun and drying it. My girl Wendy got me this heat gun a while ago and she just started her YouTube channel. So be sure to check her channel out. I'll link it down below. I actually think she is in the playlist today. So be sure to check her out. Then once it was all dry, I am just going in with the brush that I use to paint the mail holder. And I'm kind of just dry brushing over this picture in some white Waverly chalk paint and it's okay to go heavy. I really did want this to look very worn and rustic. See, I went a little heavier in some spots and other spots I went light and I really just feel like this pulls the picture together and makes it look really, really cute. I feel like um, yellow flowers in this would be pretty, white flowers. I mean, 
you know, greenery, whatever you decorate your house with. I feel like this blue is just so pretty. I don't know why I'm obsessed with it. And I normally do everything white. So this is different. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going through and dry brushing this whole picture until I get it how I like. And then by accident, I got a little bit of the antique Waverly wax on my brush. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to go with it. So that's where that comes into play. I like to pour my paint like on a plate. And yeah, I just accidentally dipped it in there because I don't pay attention. But it just, I feel like it really did just bring it together. Then I'm taking some raffia and I am just tying like a little, you know, before you do the bows on your shoestring, one of those knots or little things. I don't know. And then I lay a little bit of hot glue. That way it kind of holds the raffia there like I tied it, but you're not having to pull the raffia so tight that you break it off or snap it. So I just like to do that and I feel like it gives it a good hold. Then I was going to just like tie a little shoestring bow, right? But I felt like it looked really raggedy. I don't know. It just was janky. So I was like, mm better not do that. So I ended up just untying it and snipping off some of the ends. And then I'm splitting the ends of that to make it look more full. And you know, like I didn't use just two pieces of raffia. Then we're going to take the pieces that we cut off and make a bow for the middle of this. Now, actually stop there, girl, stop there finish, you know, finish splitting the raffia. Okay. Then we're just going to take the extra jute and I kind of just fold it over, fold it over, fold it over until I get as much as I want or until the raffia is gone, you know? And then I take some jute and I cinch the middle of the bow. And then I just split the edges because again, I want it to look like we used a million pieces of raffia when in reality, we only used a couple and it really will make your raffia go far. I can't even tell you the last time I bought a bag of raffia because I'm so, you know, I'm so good with it. <laughs> so then we're just going to hot glue that to the middle of that little straggly bow thing we got going on. And that is it for this picture. I think this is so cute. It would be cute in a kitchen, honestly, like holding your um, spatulas. And There's so much you could do with it. I, this is why I love thrift flips. I think they're so easy and so affordable to make your house look beautiful. And I'm going to start rambling and show you the finished product. If you are new to my channel, I am Savannah and I love doing high-end, budget-friendly home decor DIYs, especially Dollar Tree DIYs and thrift flips, obviously. <laughs> so if that's something you're into, I hope that you stick around. Hit that subscribe button. Also, follow me over on Instagram at Savvy Crafts with Savannah. That's where I feel like I can be a little bit more personal with you guys and keep in touch outside of YouTube. Also, if you would like to support my channel, there is a link in my description box. It really does mean so much to me, but also another way to support it is liking, sharing, and commenting on all of my videos. Again, means the absolute world to me. You guys are the best. I could not ask for better subscribers. All right, let's get back into the video. All right, for our final flip, because this video has to be under $10, I found this picture frame at Goodwill. I think it's so cute. I just loved, I don't want to say bones of it, but like the raised edges. I just love the pattern on the frame itself. So I really thought I could do something cute with it. Now, there's like paper over the back, so... I think it's possible to take the back out, but that was just too, mm -mm, no girl, too much work for me. So this is what I decided to do with it. Now I will show you my first idea and I hated it and I'll show you what it turned into obviously, but I'm just taking some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm painting the whole picture frame, the sides, the edges, and you know, in the center where, you know, it goes down a little bit to the glass. I don't care if I get on the glass cause you'll see why in a second, but I did want to give this a good solid you know, flat coat. 
So this is the first idea that I had in my head, obviously, because where else would it be? But I just didn't like the way it turned out. But I'm just taking this little square scrapbooking paper. It came in like a little flip book and I'm measuring out the middle and then I'm going to cut that out um, to size and then hot glue it in the middle on the glass. Now, this is where I was thinking, ooh, it's looking good. It's looking good. This is going to be super duper cute. But anyways, so I just go in and start distressing it because I'm like, oh, this is going to play out exactly how I want it to. It's going to look cute. And the reason that I'm leaving this in here is because even though I didn't like it, you guys might. So it's just another idea. I think it would have been cuter had I've like executed it maybe better. Maybe you guys can do it. So that's why I'm leaving in here. I'm just taking a chip brush and I'm just distressing, bringing out those raised edges because that's what I really, really loved about this picture frame. And here I go again, getting paint that shouldn't be on my brush because I don't pay attention. I got some of that blue on there and I was like, oh, but I fixed it and you can't even tell. Um, <laughs> that's what's good about paint. So I'm just taking it and kind of just dragging it, making those raised edges really come out and getting, I don't know how I like it. And then I'll take the sanding block and sand over it and bring some of that dark green out, um, just where the edges are raised and just give it a little bit more color and character. All right, here we go. So do you guys remember a while back, I bought these little flowers from Walmart. They, they're so pretty. I love them. I just haven't found what I wanted to do with them yet. I thought that this would be really cute in the middle of the picture frame as like a cute little accent on a tear tray or something. Don't get me wrong. I, I do think it's cute. It just wasn't what I was going for, I guess. I don't know. I just... I wasn't feeling it, so I do end up changing it. But if you do like this, I just went around and hot glued the sides, and then I decided to rip it off because I didn't like it. And I'm taking my heat gun and kind of heating up where the hot glue was and getting that all off to have a blank, you know, canvas. Now, you see that little burlap heart over there? That came off of a Valentine's Dollar Tree sign, and it's just been sitting in my scrap, so we're going to use it. And I was going to put it on the green, but I just felt like it needed a little bit more. Like the pattern wasn't really going with what I, you know, what I had wanted. What, jeez, what I almost made it through a whole video without messing up. What I wanted and what I was envisioning. So I took another piece of scrapbook paper. It is this one. It just came out of a book from Hobby Lobby. I liked this. I felt like it added more colors. I don't know, more like opposite sides of the spectrum, if you will. <laughs> so I just do what I did with the first piece, measure it out, cut it down to size, and then I hot glue it to the middle of the picture frame. Then I just took like some little scissors, any scissors honestly would be fine if they're little. And I kind of just took it and run it, like ran it on the bottom, kind of pushing that paper under the cracks and like it is actually framed in this. Then I'm taking a jumbo popsicle stick and I'm cutting off two pieces because I kind of want this heart to be raised. So I cut off two pieces. You could use honestly whatever you wanted as long as it gave it a raise. I mean, you don't even have to raise it. That's just what I wanted to do. So I hot glued the popsicle sticks in the middle and you know, one on top of each other. And then I hot glued the heart on top of them. Now, I feel like this is super cute as is, but as always, I wanted to add something extra. So I took some ribbon. It's from Hobby Lot, no, from Michaels. It's like a white burlap ribbon, some brown burlap ribbon, and some raffia, and a piece of jute. And I'm making a little bow. These are super simple bows to make, especially if you're not good at making bows. It's literally just laying ribbon on top of each other. And then I cinched it with the jute, and I'm kind of just pulling off some pieces to make make that white burlap ribbon look really frayed and old. And then I split my raffia, making it look full. As always, I always do that. And just, I don't know, giving it a little something extra. So then I cut the twine pieces off the back and I'm going to hot glue this to the middle of the heart. And I really feel like this just adds a little bit more, I don't know, totally my style in my house. And I really love how it turned out. And then I am going to add a wood button 
to the front of this. You can get these at Walmart. And that is it for this DIY. Let me know which one you liked better. Did you like the flower or do you like the heart? I think they're both cute. I just feel like this one goes a little bit better with my decor. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you made it all the way to the end, leave a craft emoji. Don't forget to check out the other creators in the playlist. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.